ever find yourself like debating pineapple on pizza or or like arguing the best way to load a dishwasher? Me too. <laughs> it's the important debate. It really is. Today's deep dive is all about those moments. Those times we tap into that power of reasoning. We often picture it as this like <laughs> super logical kind of Sherlock Holmes cracking a case kind of thing. But what if I told you that, that our whole understanding of reasoning needs a serious revamp? Ooh, tell me more. Okay, so the document that we are diving into today, artificial fluency, it suggests that reasoning is way more social and intuitive than, than we might think. It's really interesting, this shift in perspective, because we do tend to think of it as this really isolated process, brain in a jar, just computing away. Working it out. Yeah, but this research suggests that it really evolved as a social tool. Oh, interesting. You think about language. Yeah. Language lets us share these complex thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. But reasoning is what allows us to actually debate those thoughts, mm -hmm. to try and convince each other, and then ultimately to build some sort of shared understanding. So it's less about cold, hard logic uh -huh. and more about... What do they even call it? Shared, like shared imagination. Shared imagination. I love that. Hmm. It's really about not just declaring facts, but it's about constructing a shared reality, a way for us to align our perspectives with others. You think about even just like coming to a consensus in a group that takes reasoning. Totally. Yeah. Everyone have to present their ideas, weigh the pros and cons, and then through discussion, arrive at some kind of decision mm -hmm. that everyone can live with. Yeah. You know? So that's shared imagination in action, where it's like you're reasoning, but it's not just about the logic. It's also about the social dynamics. It's about compromise. It's about a bit of give and take. You know, That makes a lot of sense because it's not like we're just reasoning yeah. in a vacuum. It's all in the context of our relationships and our communities and our shared experiences. But where does intuition fit into this whole thing? Because it seems like there's no. this assumption that good reasoning is all about like airtight arguments and avoiding logical fallacies and all of that. And what I think is so fascinating is that this document really challenges that assumption head on. It highlights this like surprising role that intuition plays in guiding our reasoning. <laughs> like those gut feelings oh, yeah. of coherence or incoherence that we have. Like we've all had those moments where something just feels off. Even if you can't immediately pinpoint why. Totally. Yeah. And it turns out that a lot of these gut feelings are really rooted in our past experiences, the patterns that we've observed oh. and the social cues that we've unconsciously absorbed over time. So it's like our intuition is tapping into this reservoir of like unspoken knowledge and experience, exactly. even if we're not consciously aware of it. And that's really a key insight from this document that reasoning isn't just about the logical steps mm -hmm. that we consciously take, but it's really this interplay between the logic and the intuition and the social context. Okay, so if reasoning is this social tool, how does that actually play out in our day-to-day -day lives? Think about it. Persuasion, social evaluation, making decisions as a group, even establishing social norms, these are all deeply intertwined with our ability to reason. Yeah. Every time we try to convince our friend to watch a certain movie or yeah. we're navigating a disagreement with a coworker. We're using reasoning to navigate the social world around us. So it's like reasoning is that invisible thread that's connecting all these social interactions. It really is. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we've established that reasoning is more social and intuitive than we often realize. But how does this new understanding of reasoning change the way we view artificial intelligence? That's where it gets really interesting. For a long time, mm. AI research was really focused on replicating the logical rule-based aspects of reasoning. But now with the rise of these incredibly sophisticated language models, researchers are discovering that to truly mimic like human-like intelligence, AI needs to master this kind of intricate dance between language and reasoning and even intuition. So it's not just about teaching AI to think, it's about teaching it to think like us, socially yeah. and intuitively, and maybe even a little irrationally at times. Exactly, yeah, and that's where concepts like symbol tuning come into play, which as you might guess, is this fascinating technique for training AI models to reason in ways that are more more closely mirror our own intuitive processes. Symbol tuning, okay. <laughs> now you've piqued my interest, what is that? All right, well imagine this. You're trying to teach a child the word tree, but instead of using the word tree, you use a random symbol, like a hashtag. Okay, so the child sees a picture of a tree and next to it is this hashtag symbol. Exactly, and so the child with no prior knowledge of the word tree, yeah. has to make this connection between the image and the symbol purely through association, through through observation and deduction. And it's essentially what symbol tuning does with AI. Whoa. 
It forces these models to develop their own internal representations of meaning. So instead of relying on pre-programmed definitions, the AI is learning to make connections and draw inferences just like that child learning about a tree. Exactly. By using these random symbols instead of these predefined labels, we're pushing AI to develop a more nuanced and flexible understanding of language, one that's based on relationships and patterns rather than just rote memorization. That makes a lot of sense. But how does that actually work in practice? It still sounds like magic to me. Let's just say it involves a lot of data. Yeah. Some really clever algorithms and a dash of that time travel bootstrap magic that we were talking about earlier. Okay. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's unpack this idea of symbol tuning a little bit further. So we left off talking about symbol tuning and it still feels a bit like a magic trick to me. Hmm. Like, how does using random symbols instead of actual words actually help AI understand anything? So it's all about forcing the AI to, to think for itself, okay. to make connections based on context and patterns. Instead of relying on these pre-programmed definitions, think about it like this. Instead of handing AI a dictionary and saying, <laughs> here, memorize this, we're saying, okay, figure out the rules of language by observing how these symbols are used in different situations. So it's like teaching someone a new language by immersing them in conversations, but not giving them a translation dictionary. Say they yeah. just have to pick up on cues right. and infer meaning from context, basically learn the way humans do. Exactly. And what's fascinating is that this approach, this symbol tuning, it's very closely tied to this kind of mind-blowing concept called flat thinking. Flat thinking. Okay, now I really feel like I'm missing a page in the dictionary. Yeah. So it's this idea yeah. that really challenges like some of our deeply held assumptions about how our own minds work. Mm -hmm. See, we tend to think of human thought as this very deep introspective process. We're constantly plumbing the depths of our consciousness mm -hmm. to, to make decisions and, and so on. But the flat thinking theory suggests that we might not be as deep as we think we are. Wait, so you're saying all that introspection, all that agonizing over decisions, it's uh, all an illusion. No, not necessarily an illusion, but, uh. but perhaps not the whole story. The idea is that yeah. we're incredibly good at generating plausible explanations for our thoughts and actions after the fact. Oh, then true. So we might make a decision based on a gut feeling right. or a hunch or some kind of unconscious pattern recognition. And then our brains come up with this nice, logical sounding explanation yeah. for, for why we did what we did. So we're like those AI models using symbol tuning where we're making these connections, drawing inferences based on patterns. But then we tell ourselves the story yeah. about how we arrive at those conclusions through this deep, thoughtful process. That's the gist of it. And, and here's where the connection to AI research gets really interesting. It turns out that some of the most advanced language models out there, those powered by something called transformers, they actually exhibit behaviors that align with this idea of flat thinking. Transformers, like, like robots in disguise. Okay, now I know you're pulling my leg. No, I promise, this is serious stuff. Okay. Transformers are a type of AI architecture that has really revolutionized the field of natural language processing. Okay. They're the, the driving force behind those incredibly sophisticated chatbots that, that you've probably interacted with. Mm -hmm. The ones that can write poems and generate code and even hold these surprisingly coherent conversations. Okay, so not robots in disguise, but still pretty impressive stuff. But how does this tie back into flat thinking? Well, transformers, like humans, they're really good at generating plausible sounding text. They can string together words in a way that, that seems grammatically correct okay. and even contextually relevant. Yeah. But do they truly understand the meaning behind those words? That's a question that researchers are still grappling with. So we've got AI that can mimic <laughs> human-like conversation and potentially even human-like thought processes, at least on, on a surface level. And this all circles back to how we're rethinking the very nature of reasoning itself. It's like we're holding a mirror up to our own minds and realizing that things might be a lot more complex and maybe even a little weirder than we previously thought. Precisely. And, yeah. and that brings us to another kind of mind-bending concept that's really central to this whole discussion. Mm -hmm. And that is the time travel bootstrap. Yeah. It might sound like something out of a science fiction novel, but it's actually a really insightful way to understand how AI development is accelerating our understanding of intelligence itself. Okay, time travel bootstrap. Lay it on me. Okay. What are we bootstrapping and where are we traveling to? Okay, so we've established that time Travel Bootstrap isn't just a cool band name, yeah, but an actual thing. Yeah. I'm still trying to wrap my head around mm. what it actually means in the context of AI. Okay, imagine you could go back in time 
and hand your younger self a smartphone. Right. So you're essentially introducing this technology that would seem like magic to someone living in like a pre smartphone era. Uh, they might understand the basic principles, but they can't really grasp it, the complex engineering and coding mm -hmm. that that went into creating this thing. Right. Yeah. That's what we're doing with AI in this time travel bootstrap. So we're giving AI this head start by basically handing it these incredibly advanced tools, tools like those transformer models that we talked about yeah. that, that have taken us centuries of scientific progress to develop. Exactly. And what's so fascinating is that this bootstrap isn't just about speed. It's about the nature of the capabilities themselves. AI is able to leapfrog certain developmental hurdles that, yeah. that humans have had to overcome through through millennia of evolution. So it's not just that AI is learning faster than we did. It's learning in a fundamentally different way. Exactly. Oh, so what? Yeah. And remember how we were talking about more of X paradox? Yes. That idea yeah. that things that are so easy for humans, right. surprisingly difficult for computers, the time travel bootstrap really allows AI to circumvent that paradox. Okay. Now you're bringing it all back around. Oh, because okay. if AI can master these things, like language and reasoning, that have traditionally been these stumbling blocks for computers, that has huge implications, doesn't it? Huge, yeah, it really challenges our assumptions about yeah. what AI is even capable of and how it might evolve in the future. Because if AI can learn to reason in ways that are even distinct from our own, who's to say what new possibilities might open up? It's both really exciting and a little bit unnerving at the same time. But how does this actually manifest in AI? Like, How can we actually see this reasoning in action? That's a great question. One one fascinating area of research is something called inner monologue generation. Okay. So essentially teaching AI to articulate his thought process. So like AI having a conversation with itself. Yeah. Tell me more. This is getting good. All right. So imagine this. Instead of just giving you an answer, an AI could actually tell you like yeah. step by step how it arrived at that answer. It could lay out the facts that it considered, yeah. the connections that it made, maybe even the uncertainties that it wrestled with along the way. So it's like giving AI a window into its own thought process, which is something that even we humans struggle with sometimes. Exactly. But yeah. how do you actually get an AI to, to do that? So it all goes back to these knowledge graphs that we touched upon earlier, those kind of vast interconnected databases of information. All right, yeah. Researchers are training AI to, mm. to tap into these knowledge graphs yeah. and to actually use them to, to generate these inner monologues. So the AI is using this knowledge graph as a kind of mental scaffolding uh, to, to build its inner monologue on. Exactly. So it's like watching someone solve a complex puzzle. They have all the pieces laid out. And as they're trying different combinations, they might mumble to themselves like, OK, well, this piece seems like you could go here. But wait, that doesn't really fit with this other piece. So maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the inner monologue allows us to see not just that final answer, but the entire like messy, iterative process of getting there. It's like a window into AI's reasoning process. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. And what's even more exciting is that researchers are now combining inner monologue generation with, you guessed it, symbol tuning. Ah, should have seen that coming. Yeah. So it's it's about teaching AI to reason, not just with words, but right. with the, the underlying concepts and relationships yeah. represented by those symbols. Exactly. And by combining these techniques, we're not just making AI smarter. We're also making it more more transparent, mm -hmm. more, more understandable. We're starting to open up the black box yeah. and shed light on these yeah. fascinating and sometimes surprising ways yeah. that AI arrives at its conclusions. And that's a good thing because as AI becomes more powerful, more integrated into our lives, that transparency, that understanding becomes absolutely crucial. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. This whole exploration. Into the nature of reasoning, yeah. both human and artificial, yeah. is as much about understanding ourselves yeah. as it is about understanding. Yeah. The future that we're creating 